As the end of the holiday season draws near and we head toward a new year, it's often a time of reflection. And well, this past year, it's been a doozy. While your first inclination may be to declare 2020 the worst, there's actually been a few diamonds in the rough. For our end of the year show, we'll look back at our favorite attacks from way back this past year before we kick 2020 to the curb. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year. This is Wayback Attack. Welcome to Wayback Attack. My name is Brian Grantham. And sitting across from me on the wooden platform of destiny <laughs> is Preston Burt. Preston, did you have a wonderful 2020? Uh, I would say all things considered, I've had an okay 2020. <laughs> um, I think we're all trying to make it the best we can. But hey, we're not going to be down tonight. We're going to try to keep it up. Mm -hmm. The energy is going to be high because, like I said at the top of the show, even though most of the years total crap for a lot of people um there has been some cool stuff especially some retro stuff back in the forefront that uh you know it's the reason for the show way back attacks and we're gonna point out some great ones here tonight yes definitely and uh you know i personally um am you know i had some ups and downs this year but i think that as a whole looking back uh, hopefully some things can be corrected and everything's going to go smooth for 2021. I am very, very hopeful uh, for what the future brings us in this in this next great yes. year because, uh, you know, you really can't go anywhere but up, you know. <laughs> so. I'll agree with that sentiment. I'll agree with that sentiment. Um, I know we got some to catch up with some stuff, but before we do, I did want to mention show sponsor, Close to Home. Um, thank you so much to Retrofied Magazine. Uh, full disclosure, I am the editor-in-chief of <laughs> Retrofied Magazine, but hey, I'm using my platform any way we can. We've got a brand new issue coming out January 2021. It's actually our first official issue. Yes. Um, and we just revealed the cover, which you can see here. Uh, Going to have a brand new cover story featuring the oral history of Reboot, the 1994 fully computer graphics cartoon. Um, and as you can see from the cover, we're going to have an interview with Terry Nunn and uh, the, some other folks from Berlin who reformed the band recently and have put out some new albums. So we have a lot to show um, and we're excited for that. So uh, if you like retro nostalgia, which why wouldn't you if you're watching our show, mm -hmm. you should go check out Retrofied Magazine at retrofiedmag.com and uh, join up on our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash retrofied mag. And we just added a print magazine to our already amazing VIP tier. So when it drops in January, you can get the uh, digital version or the print version right to your door. Yeah. And the print version is super high quality. Yeah. None of that garbage 70s comic book paper. It's it's glossy. It's fabulous. Yeah. So. I heard there's a really cool article about Spider-Man, mm, the video game through yeah. the ages. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 also had a fresh reboot. So <laughs> wow. uh, it's, it's, it is an exciting thing. Um, I've also heard that the magazine has great mouthfeel. So <laughs> if, uh, if you want to uh, try that out, maybe you should check out the website. Uh. So well, Preston. What have you been up to lately? So I have been, you know, last episode was our Christmas show. Mm -hmm. It is not yet Christmas while we're recording this. Um, and so I have been in the the depths of trying to get Christmas spirit. And, you know, I'll, have, I'll say I have achieved Christmas spirit. Mm -hmm. We have regular movie watching. Mm -hmm. I'm wrapping presents. We're, um, I put up some lights. I spread some Christmas cheer, gave my mom a tree. Um, and, and have been doing a lot of cool family things. We've cleared off, <clears throat> tomorrow's my last day of work. We've already cleared off the breakfast table and it's puzzle central. Oh, nice. So that's something we kind of have going all through the holidays. Mm -hmm. So how about you, man? Uh, let's see, for me, um, I get in a position where I've done all my Christmas shopping. Everything's uh -huh. done, but then I'll see something and I'll be like, oh man, can I get this? 
And there are a couple things, uh, some family gifts that are coming in where I'm, I've been given money to buy presents for the kids and um, making it to where that money came in kind of kind of late and trying to get the gifts that need to be gotten in, in time. Hopefully, hopefully we make it. Um, but, you know, like there's just <laughs> I'm real bad about going also. Well, this thing, I want this thing. And uh, I, I've been told. Don't buy anything from this from this day to this day. Don't buy anything because I'm real bad about just seeing something going. Oh, I want that and buying it. And so there's things that I'm like, oh, I want this thing, but I shouldn't be buying it right now. And and to be fair, like the if I spend more money, I should probably be spending it on my kids. I already feel like they have way too much stuff anyways. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, we try to be really conscious about like not indulging too much and not being like over the top gift givers for Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, we want them to have a respectable amount and you know it's definitely the season for it this year not that we went crazy but those little extra gifts were like oh they'd like we're just like screw it they've had a year man yes. mm -hmm. they've had a year and we can we all deserve a little bit extra on top yeah. so uh you know i did do a fun thing um for me uh one of the great things i love about the holidays is eggnog uh -huh. when i was a kid my favorite thing was getting the the carton right and then just being like oh it's eggnog season baby <laughs> and like like having the carton and pouring that thick goopy syrup like uh. uh drink into the glass <laughs> uh -huh. and and Paige had never had eggnog before so the other day i picked up some eggnog so she could have it yeah oh you know i growing up i had eggnog and so it was always non-alcoholic right mm -hmm. and now as an adult people try to put on uh alcoholic eggnog and i'm like this is disgusting why would you do this well um, but I will give a shout out to Publix. Publix eggnog is like the best. It's like a milkshake almost. It's so thick. I love it. Um, you, I'm glad that you had that experience. My, mm -hmm. um, one of the final pieces of, of my childhood comeback for this Christmas season is it's, it's never Christmas until I have my gumdrop tree out. It was my, oh, yes. my mm -hmm. grandmother's gumdrop tree. It's so kitschy. It's like, it's probably from the sixties or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, this actually happened last year, but I'm very thankful for it. So it's kind of falling apart now. There's pieces broken off. It's just, literally it's just like a plastic tree you put gumdrops on. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I would just wait, couldn't wait to get to her house to have some. And um, anyway, it's all broken. It's broken in the areas now. There's been some super glue repairs to it. <laughs> but as my mom was helping my aunt um, this last year, she found an exact one. Oh, nice. Like the exact same one, never mm -hmm. used. In, in the box that you so had I've got a reserve house. one from the family to back up and um, that's just a little piece of my Christmas tradition that nice. I'm glad to continue you know so I had I saw your post on Twitter about this gumdrop tree and I was like oh that's what that tree is because I've seen those trees before but I've never seen gumdrops on them uh -huh. and so I just always thought it was some weird like tree sculpture that, that people liked <laughs> it's a pagan ritual yeah. who knows <laughs> uh, how, how long do gumdrops stay fresh on that thing <laughs> um <laughs> You know, I, I think it's about a week before they start mm -hmm. getting kind of, you know, mm -hmm. crunchy. Mm -hmm. But, hey, as a kid, it doesn't really matter. But it, it's it's actually difficult to find those gumdrops now. Like, if you go to Kroger or, or Publix or any of the grocery stores, mm -hmm. most of them don't have spiced gumdrops. Mm -hmm. You have to go to the the uh, the lower tier dollar stores to get those quality things. <laughs> Just get uh, dots, right? Aren't those no, like the gummy? No, that's trash. Get out of here with that. <laughs> yeah. The... Uh... <laughs> Does it have like the sugar, the sugar crust on those gumdrops? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, how many are there? Like twenty four? Are you supposed to eat one a day or something? No, like it's that? not like an advent thing. Oh, it's okay. just loaded up, and there's actually like a dish at the bottom to contain more that overflow. Mm. So you got to eat those first, and then you pick them off the tree. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that um, that you were able to carry on the family tradition <laughs> of of the wonderful gumdrop tree. So. Let's segue this, Brian. <laughs> I'm really working hard. I'm thinking about how to, how to do it. So, uh, you know, I know some companies, some corporate uh, masterminds that have also been able to carry on the tradition of uh, of their properties into, <laughs> into today. So, you know, we talked about it earlier. This is our 
favorite things, our favorite waybacks of the year. Yes. Right. And man, video game movies have made a comeback. Yeah. And it, well, at least they did at the beginning of the year. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that intro was Sega's Marvel Cinematic Universe right. intro, right? And man, watching that, like you see like clips from games and. I remember what you and I went and saw this in theaters earlier this yes. year. And when I saw that play on the screen, all I could think about was, oh my God, they're going to make a Golden Axe movie. They're going to do this. Rage. Yeah. Oh, I, like the possibilities are endless. And um, it, so when I was thinking about things that I really liked and, and what I wanted to get back to, I thought about this, right? But it also works really well because. Um, we have a video game movie that just launched this past weekend. What? So Monster Hunter, the movie, came out in America this past weekend. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, Mila Jovovich and Paul W.S. Anderson. Is that his name? Is that a director? Um, he, uh, if that's the same director that did the Resident Evil movies, it's that guy. <laughs> and so um, were you a fan of those movies? Have you seen the, the Resident, Resident Evil movies? Is that the one where the <clears throat> ash falls? Mm, no, that's Silent Hill. Oh, that okay. was very good. Yeah, I think I've seen one of the Resident Evil movies, but I couldn't tell you which one it was. They were on a big pedestal fighting, mm -hmm. and like the threat of falling off. Is I that the thing? I don't know. Okay, I I, I like I like the first movie. There's like four of them, right? Oh, there's like eight of them. Or nine uh, the of them. movies? Yes. Uh huh. Okay, I've there... seen a Mila Jovovich movie okay. <laughs> that was Resident Evil related. <laughs> well, uh, so you know they tackled the biggest uh the biggest capcom game of all time and i don't know if you know this but monster hunter is capcom's number one grossing video game of all time this, the, the most recent monster hunter uh the one that came out um who two three years ago uh, monster hunter uh world so brian mm -hmm. i have a confession uh-huh i've never heard of monster Hunter. never heard of it i've never seen this or heard of it so monster hunter is a really big franchise in when japan when did it come out Oh, forever ago. It's old. Yeah. Okay. It's um, it's a big it's a big property in Japan because uh, you can play locally with people, but usually on handhelds. What did it come out on? What was the premiere system? Oh man, there's been one on. I want to say it's primarily Nintendo consoles and handhelds. Okay. Okay. Um, Monster Hunter World that came out a couple years ago was on Xbox, PC, and PlayStation Four. And then they actually have a new Monster Hunter game coming out on the Switch next year. Mm -hmm. So, but they, it is a game that is steeped in tradition. It is very old school. And this new most recent game up, uh, kind of upgraded some of that stuff, right? And brought it more into the future. I mean, there are still like issues that should have been resolved with like online playing and stuff like that. But all that aside, Monster Hunter for the movie came out this past weekend, right? In the U.S. it came out. It had already come out overseas. This weekend, in the U.S., it brought up its earnings to $7 million. <laughs> <laughs> what was its budget? I don't even know. Probably <laughs> less than that. I'm Probably more than that. Yes. So, um, to give you an idea, since we were talking about Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic the Hedgehog's opening, movie, or opening weekend, it took $57 million in its opening weekend. It went on to gross $210 million in the first 10 days. Wow. So, um, you know, obviously things are different with covid covid did not exist in america at least back when sonic came out yeah and um uh you know big difference there but i think i think it's crazy to think about how poorly i don't understand why studios are, or i guess i do i understand why studios are still wanting to put movies out in theaters because they don't want to make the theater companies mad yeah but man you got to do something yeah it's <laughs> <laughs> seven million worldwide that's crazy so you know i, I know that the situation is a lot different now than it was at the start of the year when Sonic the Hedgehog came out. But I think that, to your point, video game movies becoming a thing again, mm -hmm. it might be possible because of what Sonic had proven yes. could could happen. Yep. And the promise of that Marvel-style logo, like mm -hmm. you said, that that's really encouraging. You know, it's really hopeful that one day we could get there again with video game movies and they'll be of better quality than 
Super Mario Brothers or Double Dragon yep. or whatever those horrible movies were from the past. Yeah, those movies do hold a place in my heart, though. I know we talked about those movies earlier yeah. in the year, and uh, you know the best way to watch the best way to watch the Super Mario Brother movie is the Rift Tracks version. Um, so you can, if you buy it, you can just stream it. You don't even have to download it. But um, we have been told in chat that Monster Hunter had a sixty million dollar budget, so they're just chipping away at it, man. They're gonna get there. <laughs> I believe it. Once you know, once that movie hits streaming uh, and like like DVDs and stuff like that, there is a possibility it can make that back up just because of the popularity of the game. Yeah. So, you know, and I wonder too, if maybe depending on how fast things get back to normal, mm -hmm. if some of these movies that originally went straight to video, maybe they'll have a theatrical run. Oh yeah. You and, know, and, it, it, in reverse order, usually yep. it's, it's the theater first and then home video second. But maybe because of the circumstances, they'll go the reverse way. Yeah, and and there's still a draw for people to want. Like, there's people that want to experience those movies in theaters, right? Yep. Like, I'm sure Tenet will like. They'll I, they have to do another thing. I have I, have, I haven't seen the movie, but usually Christopher Nolan's movies are very visually intensive and so Who, who's christopher nolan or what's his name i'm just kidding oh, okay. <laughs> I, just <messed> up. <laughs> I just assumed i said his name wrong <laughs> so uh, usually his movies are like very intensive with with their visual effects and and they play a large role in the movies that he makes and so um i can easily see them being like okay we're bringing it back out because you know the way that they kind of premiered that movie was in Fortnite. what yeah they either showed like the first trailer or there was something about that movie where they showed it in Fortnite. That's weird, man. So video, weird, bro. Video games and movies. So, well, those are, that's a good pick, man. I, uh, I, I definitely think that was noteworthy for the year and I hope it continues in the future. Um, I actually have something similar. So, uh, let's take a look at my pick. We need each other. Don't we? Are you okay? Hurry, please. Wherever you go. Hello? Hello. You're standing right behind you. I know you better than anyone else in the world. He has figured out a way to be invisible. You too. Please listen to me. I know why you feel like you're going insane sometimes. I'm the only one who can help you. I see you! The Invisible Man Rated R. All right, I know it seems like a million years since you and I saw that. <laughs> I know. Um, but that was a, a highlight for me. And I, viewers, listeners, the rest of the show will not all be things that happened <laughs> the two months before COVID. Um, but these two just did. And it's, it's really neat to see that this has... I would still consider it, even if other stuff that was supposed to have come out in the movie theaters had come out, I would still consider this a highlight yes. because... We had a whole show about it. You can go listen to it on our archives. But, um, you know, it was, one, really, really, really well done. Mm -hmm. um, it brings back a nostalgic property. Um, but also, I would say that aside from The Invisible Man, I think horror as a genre has been elevated this year. Mm -hmm. And I, I consider that a little bit nostalgic because horror popularity ebbs and flows. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, COVID... COVID has caused a lot of disruption. And one of the things that has remained constant this year is low budget horror movies mm -hmm. that would make it straight to video anyway. Yep. They have continued to be released straight to video. And so while other new things have been held back, that pipeline has continued. And so um, I was looking through, I mean, we could talk more about Invisible Man particularly, but I was looking through at um, our uh, there's a thrillist list that mm -hmm. um, Scott Weinberg, a movie critic, has been compiling over the year of the best horror movies of 2020. And, you know, it's like 60 long and you just run through and there's just there's just great ones like VFW, mm -hmm. which is like Assault on Precinct 13. Mm -hmm. um, there's a one on Amazon called Get Duked, which is like, well, and there's also one called The Hunt, which is both like a play on The Most Dangerous Game. Mm hmm. And, oh, it's like the pest. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then there's Love and Monsters, which was, uh, it was going to be released in theaters and was released at home. Mm -hmm. And then at HBO, you got Lovecraft Country. So it's like a renaissance almost. And I think it's been experiencing that for a few years now. But for me, 2020 kicked off with 
Invisible Man, which is just so good. And because so few movies have been released since then, Mm -hmm. Oscar contender? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Hmm. That would be interesting because... Oh, are they going to do the Oscars this year? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So it's it's it, you know it's also notable to to, to say that um, on that list, the thrillist list, he Invisible Man was number one. Number one. And so you know it was a such a well made movie, and I love there's a part man. My, one of my favorite things about going to the movie was seeing Preston scream. <laughs> oh, dude, it got me so good, and you know. It was coming. Like, you knew it would happen. Mm-hmm. And it still scared the crap out of me. Yeah, it was great, too, because it was in that trailer. And so, <laughs> viewers, if uh, if you want to watch that trailer over and over, see if you can figure out what part. <laughs> it's going to scare Preston very much. But the, um, man, the uh, Shudder also did a similar thing where they, they did a post where they thanked everybody for how great of a year that they've had mm-hmm. because, because of that. You know, just what you were saying, how all these movies that usually fly under the radar are getting brought to light just from people staying at home this year yeah. and, 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 you know, really engaging more with, with that streaming platform. So, yeah. Um, so we had a comment in the chat when we were first started talking about your Sonic, the movie mm-hmm. and seeing it in the theater is that seeing movies in the theater feels like a whole, uh, retro activity now. Like it's yep. not something you do. So I splurged and a Christmas gift for my family tomorrow December 23rd, we're going to the movies. I, uh, Scrooge McDucked it, as I say, and purchased a private screening for my family and a couple of close friends playing it safe. Brian was invited, yep. couldn't come. <laughs> um, but, uh, of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I miss the theater so much, so much, but I'm really excited to get back to it. Do you have to supply the movie? Uh, you pick it. So oh, okay. AMC Theaters is who I'm going through. I actually have to drive like 45 minutes to go to that one because <laughs> our local theaters are regal and it's closed. But uh, they have a, a whole bunch of legacy movies you can choose from. Mm-hmm. And this time, early in the year, they had like E.T. and Goonies and, you know, Jaws or whatever. But this time of year, they have most of those legacy movies are Christmas themed <clears throat> movies mm-hmm. with a couple of exceptions like Hook. Mm-hmm. Oh, you should have done that. But then you also have the the new movie. So you can see Tenet, but you mm-hmm. have to pay 250 bucks for that. Oh. And I'm not that kind of money bags. I'm surprised it's so cheap. Yeah, it really is. So it was 100 bucks, and you get to bring up to 20 people. But as it sits, we are currently bringing 11. <laughs> so. Well, hey, if you'd done Hook, I, I would have come to that. Oh, I bro. I away. Rufy, oh! <laughs> So. All right, well, let's Rufy go to the next one. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't ready. I'm, I'm the one. I'm the transition king. Uh, but, uh, okay, here we go. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was in a half shell. Total power. They're the world's most fearsome fighting team. We really hit the turtles. They're heroes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why we will not be able to monetize this video on YouTube. <laughs> so, <laughs> Way to go, Brian. <laughs> but uh, this year was such a big year for those Heroes in a Half Shell. They had a pinball machine come out. They had uh, a re- uh, not a reboot, but like a new, fresh take on on the story, the comics, uh, the last Ronin oh, yeah. that came out this year. Um, you had NECA killing it with... Um, figures for them this year with you know game figures like they had the game figures movie license figures and cartoon figures uh and then they also brought the turtles into smite which is a um it's an online game and so you can play as the four turtles it's like it's funny because it's a game of gods and like you play as like 
Zeus or you know stuff like that, and the turtles are now in that game also. I, haven't, I know I, I'm familiar with Smite, mm-hmm. but I hadn't seen any promotion around that. That's really cool. Yeah, it's funny because that that studio is actually close to here. Yeah. So, um, but but yeah, the uh, man, the turtles have had such an amazing year. I am super excited for NECA is re-releasing the 18 inch uh, movie figures, and so. Now I can finish my collection. Yeah, that's great, man. Uh, that was a really, really well done one. It's too rich for my blood, but you've got a few here, and they look amazing. And I, it, I'm glad that they didn't just continue with with more of them, and mm-hmm. that you can actually get them exactly as they were. Yeah, you know, I think I think what they basically did is, you know, you look online, you can see the demand is still there because people are selling those still on on you know the uh, on the side, and so having the ability to be able to just say, hey, let's just do another run. Let's renew that license. Or yeah. if we've already got the license in place. So, you know, yeah. it feels a little like cheating with the Turtles in mm-hmm. as a whole being mm-hmm. your, your choice because it feels like the Turtles have constantly been evolving and there have been constant iterations. But I think you're right in that this year is really a, a, a sea change. Yes. It's not just one thing. It's a whole bunch of stuff and all of them are good. Mm-hmm. You know, there have been reboots before with different looks and Nickelodeon show and or a new movie um, but they've all you know not been the same type of quality as we're seeing with with, mm-hmm. with all this stuff um, we never get to talk about it what did you think of finally getting to read The Last Ronin? Oh yeah I I, I, I was I thought for sure I knew by the end of that issue um, who the turtle was uh-huh. because I was like oh he said this so it's going to be this one or or oh the ghost said this so that one's dead right and then i don't want to give it away for anybody but no. um but i was surprised a i was surprised by who it was and then b somebody shows up and set who says like oh my god so and so and i was like how would you know that <laughs> like i mean i guess you know in the movies they did a good job of making them look different you know uh-huh. but in the comics they really don't yeah and they so- got the color uh the color mask and otherwise mm-hmm. you don't know mm-hmm. oh they also have in the cartoon they have their initials yeah. on their belt mm-hmm. buckle so yeah. uh for those of you who may not know what brian's <laughs> talking about it's a cart it's a comic book by eastman and laird mm-hmm. well it's based off a story that they did sorry based mm-hmm. off a story they did um where it envisions a future where only one turtle has survived mm-hmm. and is coming to avenge his brothers yep and uh, you know, it's back to the gritty comic book feel for it because those comic books eventually like spun off into more co- like cartoon style. Like they were very cartoony and uh, not not the bloody and gritty that that comic that comic started as. Do you so. know if the other issues have been able to come out yet? Because I know there was a delay for issue one. Yeah, that's the only one I've read. They're not monthly; they're yeah. quarterly or something okay. like that. And so the I don't think the second issues come out yet. Okay. So. Well, they they got me hooked with the first one. Mm-hmm. I, I would definitely want to read the rest of them. Yeah, yeah, they did. They've done a really good job with it. And so yeah, man, like that pinball machine's amazing. Um, hey, did you see your? Did you check your email today? Mm-hmm. They got a code update. Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah, you know. I'm torn on it because I, I'm still running the, um, we did a stream where I showed it off, but like that alternate code that actually has clips from the actual cartoon mm-hmm. in it. And I, I, that guy, I need to check to see, cause he said that he was going as code updates came, that he would update his code as well with them. And so I need to see if he's been doing it. I don't, I might wind up going back to the, to the Factory. stern. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just because, you know, they are updating it on such a clip that I want to see all the new stuff. They're they doing added to it. in this one, they added a new little, uh, game mode. That you can start in a track mode with the flippers. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. interesting. They're doing a really good job. You know, I was super excited that um, earlier in the year, you know, since Southern Fried got canceled this year, we did the virtual event. And I was excited that I got to talk to Dwight Sullivan about about Turtles and, and everything. And I hadn't gotten my game yet. So, uh, you know, just kind of still, like, excited about what, what was to come and talk to him about that. And so I told him that he should put a um, – that he should put some secret stuff in it. And so, uh, thanks a lot, Brian. Maybe this he is will. Your, this is maybe all you're doing. Will. Yes, I mean, hey, they're updating that code fast <laughs> enough. They they can throw whatever they want in that. So, um, but yeah, you know, I was, uh, I'm excited to see to see what happens with that. And you know, um, for the future, you had um, Seth Rogen talking about the new turtle movie that he he's going to work on. And so it'll be exciting to see like where that franchise goes in the future because I think that he has a cool take on it, and um, it, it'll be exciting to see what you know what what Nickelodeon winds up doing with them because they've seen this year and how great this year has been for that franchise so I love it yes 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 so uh I know you love the turtles Preston I do 
but I wonder if you love anything else quite as much as this. You have something I want. It will be mine. Mandalorian new season streaming October 30th on Disney Plus. So I don't remember when season one of The Mandalorian started. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure it was pre COVID because I remember talking on the commute with my friend Shannon, who was trying to convince me to watch this Star Wars thing that I was like so over Star Wars. I was like, I do not want to watch something about Boba Fett or whatever. And he convinced me enough that in the lack of any new movies and things, I would checked out The Mandalorian on Disney Plus. And season two, season one's been good. Season two, especially the season finale, has been amazing. Well, Preston, I hear that one thing isn't amazing. You think I'm the most overrated character in all of Star Wars. I saw what you're tweeting out there. I don't know that it was entire Star Wars. I just said that Boba Fett was a bit overrated. All right. Well, I've got my eye on you because I am so important. I didn't just capture. I saw someone say I captured Han Solo. I captured the entire crew. That's how important I am. Sure, maybe some blind guy knocked me off a boat into a Sarlacc pit. I fought my way out. I'm super important. Yeah, you, you also fought your way out and fought your way through some pizzas, too, I think. Cause... Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> you look a little hefty there. You gotta you gotta eat. When you're left in the desert, what do you think Sarlacc pits eat? I gotta eat whatever's in there, and man, that pizza is good. <laughs> All right, well, uh, <laughs> thanks thanks for your appearance, Boba Fett. Anytime. <laughs> um, Mandalorian, I... You can probably skip ahead if you're just listening to this or watching this and you haven't seen The Mandalorian yet because um, there will be some spoilers over the next five minutes or so. So you've been warned. Um, so Mandalorian, you know, it's like a space Western. Mm -hmm. I watch this with my family. Um, it's something we can all watch together. It's cinematic in scope. It has redeemed the Star Wars property for me. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I feel like the fanboys have played it out. The, the discourse is just overwhelming on social media and I'm sick of it. Yeah. And I didn't really like the way they ended the new trilogy. I actually liked the last Jedi. Um, and you know, it was okay. I don't think that they, it was satisfactory ending for some characters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Season two finale was a satisfactory ending for some characters. Yeah. All right. So I also want to reiterate, if, if you have not seen The Mandalorian season two yet, I mean, you should have. It's been, it's been several days. And I know some people were waiting to binge it and it's over now. It's only eight episodes. They should have seen it by now. So uh, I, I want to say something and I will try not to get too specific with it. I think I think the ending to th that the second season is awesome, right? I do have some concerns. One, I know that there's drama going into the season about Pedro Pascal and he want him wanting to show his face more. They made that possible by saying, "Hey, he was part of a like a religious cult and he didn't know it, so now maybe he'll show his face more," right? Mm -hmm. Also, the way it ended, that could just be the end of the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I understand streaming services like to do three seasons and then that's it. So maybe they were just like, ah, two's enough. We have <laughs> we have the book of, of Boba now, and that's what everybody really wanted. Yeah. But man, so there is a moment in this season with some CG. And when when we watched it, I was like, the CG was so bad, I said, Oh, well, cool. At least they just got an actor that looked like him. Right? And then Paige was like, no, that's CG. And I, it, like, it looks weird. It's CG. And I said, but it doesn't look like him. Why would they CG it and it not look exactly like him? So what I have decided is Hollywood needs to embrace the deep fake. 
Have you watched? I've any... seen the deep fakes. Yeah. yeah, man. Like people, and you know, there's especially Star Wars. They do somewhat. I don't know what channel it is, but someone on YouTube does this for like the Solo movie and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where they do the deep fakes for everybody. Man, they should Hollywood. There must be some kind of like licensing thing or something where you're like because you're training a computer based off of footage from something else, like that gets in some kind of weird gray area. But deep fakes look so much better than CG ever does. That's so. right. Okay, so this is your final spoiler warning. I'm actually going to say what happened at the end of the season Uh-oh. two uh, finale. So, all right. The reason this is a way back attack for me isn't just because Star Wars is back in the limelight. Because Star Wars has been in the limelight for a long time. Mm-hmm. The reason this is a way back attack for me is because it's the return of Luke Skywalker, Jedi Master, mm-hmm. as he should have been. Uh, it was great seeing him in the new trilogies. I thought his ending was okay, Mm -hmm. but we did never, we never got to see Luke as a Jedi master. I mean, if you've read stories before, if you've read the comic books, you kind of got to see that. But as far as a cinematic experience, we never got to see like, you know, we got to see young Obi-Wan kicking butt, taking names in, in Phantom Menace. We got to see high action and just mastery of the force. We never got that with Luke until now. And it was amazing. Yeah. Did you see the, um... I think it was the Nerdist posted this thing where it was like, like my father before me and the whole scene where he comes, like the door opens and he comes out like with his lightsaber and killing the, uh, the death troopers or whatever. And it's almost like, like exactly what, what um, Darth Vader did. Like when he, like his door opened and he came oh, out wow. and it was like, it was, it was pretty cool. I, I would love for them to be able to expand more on Luke's lore because mm-hmm. you know, everybody wants dark Luke. Uh-huh. Everybody wants big, big Luke. And um, I think that they can really have the opportunity to be able to um, to really like have you know they they kind of set the precedent that uh, like what he did with Episode Seven, right? And mm-hmm. so setting that pre or no eight setting that precedent and then let let you fill let them fill in the backstory with these great shows because they they knocked it out of the park with Mandalorian. Like sure, there's parts in it where like it doesn't look great, you know, because they have a lo- lower budget. And sometimes they're just limited with what they can do because of that. But, you know, maybe now Luke hopping around with Grogu and going to collect all everybody to make the Jedi Order again is going to be like the new the new thing. So Yeah, well, all I know is um, if they, uh, to, your, to, to your statement about them doing the deep fake, mm-hmm. um, if they don't choose to do that and they want to continue the Luke story, all they have to do is hire an actor who looks almost exactly like him, yeah. Sebastian Stan. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen those side-by-side shots of Sebastian Stan mm-hmm. from, you know, he's the Winter Soldier? Okay. He looks almost exactly like a young Mark Hamill. Um, really? Yeah, he really does. Mm-hmm. He can pull it off. You know, like close enough. Oh, no, yeah, that's fine. If you're going to do live action, get someone who looks close enough. Um, it was it was incredible. Um, the... Just a few more minutes on The Mandalorian if you're just tuning tune back in. And spoilers. <laughs> at the very end, you know, there was a post credit scene, which I didn't mm-hmm. know at first. So shout out to uh, my friend for telling me to check that out. Um, I don't really care about the Boba Fett story. I'll watch it mm-hmm. based on what they've done with Mandalorian. Um, but they showed Boba Fett coming back to Jabba's palace, mm-hmm. who the leader was now Bib Fortuna mm-hmm. sitting in the chair. And my gosh i don't know i was i still think i'm more excited about luke skywalker but <laughs> seeing boba fett sorry bib fortuna looks so disgusting and just like obese mm-hmm. and aged it was it was great too yeah i i think the cool thing that they can do with boba fett is that he can be he can do darker things than than mando can right like uh-huh. Man, like mando is, is like he sometimes he has to be a bad guy to do the right thing but Boba can just be the bad guy. And so I think that they can, if they do wind up keeping both series going, uh, I think that they can still, even though they're still about the same type of character, they can still have totally different types of stories for both those characters. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll end with this, and that is that in the absence of the cinema, like I said earlier, this has been a cinematic scope. And this has also been something that we've been able to enjoy as a family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, looking for bright spots for this crap year of 2020, it's spending more time together with my family and being able to have something that we all love together. They went with me to see the new Star Wars movies. They like sci-fi, okay. Mm -hmm. But this one, and this episode in particular, my daughter stopped the thing and said, 
this is so cool. Mm -hmm. And it just hit home and I was like, I am cherishing this. So thank you, um, Dave Filoni. Thank you, John Favreau. Mandalorian has been uh, a great way back attack for me for the Star Wars universe. Yeah. You know, um, I one of the things that I like about that Star Wars universe is how everything's so grimy and realistic, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but there's one thing that they're missing. Yeah, I know it's a long time ago and far, far away. But in the future, you have to worry about corporations. <laughs> Why did that not work? Oh, there it goes. Oh, no. God. <laughs> it happens. Come to me. Before your eyes and inside your head. They can program you. They can play you like a videotape recorder. You let me watch it? Videodrome. First, it controls your mind. Then, it destroys your body. Videodrome. A terrifying new weapon. Rated R. Now playing in Hollywood Pacific and Pacific. Cyberpunk. The cyberpunk genre is back, baby. I saw, I saw their title on the notes and I was like, we're going to talk about cyberpunk. And I'm glad you're talking about the genre mm -hmm. and not just the video game. Yeah. You know, the, the video game, I think, at least for me, it, it was like a big driving factor this year for me getting back into the genre. Um, man, just like... It, cyberpunk is a cool genre, right? It's a cool way to look at the future and kind of tell like the threats that are there and it really seems like we are totally headed that way with the way that like all these companies are eating up other companies and just getting bigger and bigger and hey stuff man like you're that. encouraging the deep fakes over here <sighs> you know i mean hey i it wasn't me it was running man <laughs> running man is the first movie i saw that used deep fakes so um but dude like cyberpunk you know it, it, it is in, a, in of itself a way back attack because it is a video game based off of an old pen and paper role playing game from mm -hmm. the 80s, right? And the cool thing about that, that pen and paper game was um, as they did revisions to it, they changed the years. And so um, the like most popular version of the game was Cyberpunk 2020, which fitting that the game came out this year. And so it's Cyberpunk 2077. Um, so I thought that was cool. But the my first real like um, introduction to cyberpunk as like a genre was a different video game for the 3DO called Hell the Cyberpunk Adventure. Uh, have you ever heard of this game? No. It was it was on a bunch of it was on PC. It was on the 3DO. Um, pretty much back then, anything that had a disc drive was like all about adventure games and stuff like that uh, because they were starting to add real actors to it, so you'd hear their voice and stuff like that. And this game was starring Dennis Hopper, Grace Jones, uh, Stephanie Seymour, Jeffrey Holder. They were all actors in the game. And um, you, like, you woke, like, I don't know, the intro to this game was, like, you falling from the sky, or I guess from Earth, down to hell. And, like, you, like, landed next to this, like, seedy bar in hell. And, like, but it was, like, all futuristic. Like, you were jacking into terminals and, like, doing all this kind of stuff. So, um, but it was it was a really cool game. So. I've I got to seek it out, man. You should. I, I thought about it because when I was like, oh, maybe I'll play some. Like, I, I have it still. And I, I have it on my, like, I have a, th a copy for the, my 3DO. And so I thought about maybe playing it and streaming it. But I got back into that, right? I got back, because of Cyberpunk, I finally finished the Neuromancer trilogy. Um, finished the third book on that. I also... Who wrote uh, that? Oh, God, no. <laughs> I don't, I'm so bad with names. Um... Someone's going to know. I'm telling you. I'm just going to keep talking. Someone in chat's going to say who it is. It's, gosh, I don't remember. Uh, will you, Gibson. Will oh, you, yeah. yeah. Is it Gibson? I think it's Gibson. Anyways. Um, and then I also finally watched Videodrome. I have owned that movie for so long and never watched it. Like, I always had intentions of watching it. And so finally this year, I was like, I'm going to watch it. Uh, David Cronenberg, right? Yes. Yeah. He great. Uh, and also, shout out to Videodrome, the... Uh, only surviving Atlanta video yes, rental store. Uh -huh. You can still rent some DVDs and Blu-rays over there. And they actually have a VHS section for sale. So go support Atlanta's Videodrome near the Plaza Theater, yeah. downtown Atlanta. Yeah, I man, I love Cronenberg's like like body horror things. But he also like have you ever seen um the Existence? Have you ever seen that movie? No. No. So 
it is also like I would say you could say that that movie takes place in the same universe. Existence is about like the this guy that's making this new video game, and you like, or it's a lady. I'm, there's there's twists in this movie, so I'm trying to remember what. Spoiler I don't, alert! I don't want to ruin. Oh my it. gosh! But at, at some point, so you have this like this like they made this like bio mutant like controller, and you like stick it into your spine or whatever, and and you live the game. And and man, they did such a good job with this game because it's a role playing game like cyberpunk is right or Fallout or Elder Scrolls, and like when you're talking to people, like they're just like. <laughs> like waiting for your response, you know, and stuff like that is they, they did such a good job with this game. And then it winds up, you know, being about like corporate terrorism and stuff, you know, but man, like uh, I, Cronenberg has like an amazing director. And I think that his depictions of like body deformations are like no one else can top him. I know his son is starting to make movies like that too. And so, um, It'll be interesting to see, but man, cyberpunk as a genre this year. What a Look, great thing. Our audience can never say that we aren't varied in our topics. Never mm. did you think that we'd log on today, talk about <laughs> um, the Invisible Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, David Cronenberg, and cyber terrorism. <laughs> yeah. uh, but here we are. It's 2020. What yeah. can I say? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, if, if you have not seen... Uh, any of those movies, please check them out. Um, they're amazing. It's not, I will say, go into existence. Like, if you're not a big video game person, you're not going to get as much out of it. Like, I think a lot of the reason that I personally like that game is because of the way that that stuff is depicted. Um, but I think it's still like a pretty solid uh, Cronenberg film. So. so before we move on from this topic, mm -hmm. because we have a few few minutes to spare in our runtime, mm -hmm. and it is just so topical, please share your thoughts on the cyberpunk 2077 mm -hmm. uh scenario what do you what are your thoughts so i got i so all right i was uh, well first give a little primer just for people who may not be familiar with cyberpunk oh, 2077 yeah. at all so it's uh it is ever so it was like the game of the year right everyone had hyped this game up so much they have they first showed off that uh, cd project red the people that make the witcher uh video games um and the people that made The Witcher popular worldwide. Um, they are, they showed this off seven years ago, a trailer. Saying, that long? Yeah. Saying I knew that, it was a long time ago, yeah. but I didn't know it was seven years. They're like, we're wow. going to, we're making this game. And people lost it because, you know, up to that point, they had made three Witcher games. And it, people were so happy with the way that, that series had turned out. Um, everyone was so excited to see how they, what they would do with something else, right? And, CD Projekt Red had earned the trust of a lot of gamers uh, to because of the quality of games. They had a history of pushing a game back. It's not coming out till it's ready, that type of thing, right? And they are like very well known for the the writing in, in their games. They they do a really good job where like side stories are, have just as much meaning and impact as the main the main story that you're that mm -hmm. you're playing, right? And you know, they've just really lost all that with this game. So the problem is um, there there are people, I think, that have talked to certain media outlets that work there. And I think the reason that it came out in the state that it did, when it did, instead of being pushed back another year like it should have been, was that their bonuses were based off of review scores and that it had to come out this year. Oh, wow. And so, but like, that team crunched. Like, they are working, like, 100-hour weeks, right? Mm. And they're trying to get this game out. And the problem is when you're working people like that, they're not going to make their best work, right? And so in order to get good review scores and to get good sales, because they already, like, based off of just pre-orders, they already made back their development cost right. on that game. So from here on out, it's just pure profit. And um, they, they just put out a game that wasn't done. They only showed off, like, they only let media outlets show off footage they were given they could play the game they want they gave them the pc build they said play the game you can talk about it but this is the only footage that you can show and so people said that they, there was it was a buggy game but the pc version is by far the best version of that right game. i have seen the side-by-side -side shots mm -hmm. of the console versus the pc in the exact same shot and mm -hmm. yeah the pc version definitely has the better graphics yeah the um i i got it on pc because um it's a last gen game uh, late like typically I play everything on PC, but the PS5, the controller for that is so awesome. Did you end up getting that? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, the controller for that is so amazing. And I want to see, with the haptic feedback and the way the triggers work, I want to see what everybody does with it. And so I will probably play most games on PS5 this generation just for that. And But this is a last-gen game. This is an Xbox One and PS4 game. And so I was like, no, no PS5 special stuff. So let's just get it on PC. It'll, it'll be better on that. And I have run into some bugs. Um, but all, all games like that have some bugs in them. Fallout 4 uh, was extremely buggy when it came out, but people still love that game. Um, but man, it's just like how Nickelback's the worst band in the world and stuff like that. That game had so much hype that just like the rubber band snapped back of like everybody just hating on it. Like even like, man, just up to three days before it released, like reviews started hitting and like this, this, uh, I can't remember her name, but this, this lady that works at Game Informer. She gave it like a seven out of 10 and people just like dogged her. Like, uh -huh. you don't know what you're talking about. Like these people have never played the game. Yeah. Oh, this is the best game ever. You don't know. And then it's, it hits. And then immediately people were like, oh, I guess she, I guess she gave, she gave it a really good review. Like it should have been like a four <laughs> or a three. And so it's just, man, yeah. like it is a great example of like how a company is manipulating their customer base in order to meet certain standards for their shareholders and how that directly impacts their customer base. Corporate greed. Exactly. We're bringing it back around. Yeah. Hey, they made a game about <laughs> cyberpunk, man. <laughs> They're really trying to tell the story. Like, that's the punk part of cyberpunk is fighting back against those corpses. That is so meta, dude. <laughs> they need a higher Metacritic score because, <laughs> wow, genius. <laughs> Mind blown. No, but in all seriousness, you know, that, that uh, debacle aside, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure it'll get fixed eventually. Yep. Um, but... To your point, let's give credit where credit's due for our best of 2020. At least that game brought back to the forefront the whole genre for you, and you're able to explore some of the nostalgic aspects of cyberpunk and uh, explore something that you've never done in all, you know, before with watching Videodrome. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, kudos where kudos are due, and maybe you'll actually get to enjoy the game later. Yes. Uh, you know, like I said, I haven't hit personally a lot of bugs. So someone in the chat uh, asked if it was Bethesda. You might as well think it's Bethesda because all their games are super buggy as well. But no, in this case, it was CD Projekt Red. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, they have started having to issue refunds, um, and they finally started working. Eventually, originally they said, "Oh yeah, you can get refunds. Just go back to where you bought it from." And then Sony wound up taking the game off their store, off uh -huh. their digital storefront, and they because they were like they didn't partner with us about this, and like all these people were calling saying, "Hey, can I get refunds?" And they're like, "No, you can't have a refund on it." And they're like, "What?" It's so, like, man, it's just like every day since this game has launched, there has been something crazy about it. But yes, yes, I am happy that I was able to bask in the rest of the warm, uh, the warm glow of, of the net and, uh, and and take in the rest of uh, Cyberpunk. So um, hopefully uh, that doesn't happen to you uh, with your last uh, your last topic, Preston. There's something strange in the neighborhood. So who are you going to call? Ghostbusters! Each sold separately. Have no fear. Venkman, Steph, and Spangler are here. So are these ah, ghosts. They got exoplasm. We've been good. Now what? Stay puffed marshmallow man. Let's show this pile of dessert who's boss. Activate Neutrona Blaster. We ain't afraid of no ghosts. Peter Venkman, ectoplasm, stay puffed marshmallow man, and other figures each sold separately. Ghostbusters, new from Kenner. So for best of 2020, you may be asking yourself, Preston, why are you showing me a commercial <laughs> of the real Ghostbusters toy line from 1986? And I will say to you, my friend, it is because you can buy those exact figures on the shelf today, mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. with only a slight variance on the back of the card. Otherwise, it looks picture perfect. They're the original molds, the original colors, original cards. It's fantastic. And so for my final pick, I'm using that as an example, but I'm going to say 2020 has been great to us. The way back attack for this is retro toys are reigning supreme. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some arguments to be made that that's, they're leaning a little too heavy on the nostalgic <laughs> properties. Mm -hmm. But if you cherish those memories, if you cherish those toy lines, have I got some good news for you because <laughs> they are available in, uh, in spades. So... We've got the Kenner Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. We've got retro Masters of the Universe figures mm -hmm. that are released on retro cards. They have more articulation, but they look styled very similarly to the retro original figures. You've got um, G.I. Joe Classifieds. Mm -hmm. 
you've got i mean uh the we we mentioned the ninja turtles yep the NECA ones that look like the cartoon they even make um uh, i just saw they have turtles in time versions yep. of these <laughs> figures it's crazy like if you want a property other than mask apparently cuz what's up with mask um you can get it you know it's almost as if hasbro only makes these toys now like all their properties I, well, you, they bought up Kenner. Yeah. I, oh, I know. Yeah. But what's a what's a property that that Hasbro makes that's not a retro thing? Because they like the only thing is I can think of they have like Masters of the or not Masters uh, um, Power Rangers. Uh, they they have that that license now. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like everything that Hasbro makes uh, is all is all retro stuff. Well, you know they're able to. Uh, yeah that 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 definitely does go. You can look at it one way or the other mm-hmm. because I feel bad for some kids that are just being force fed <laughs> their parents' properties. Um, I know there are some new toys and new shows that come out, but you know, if you look down the, the quote boy toy aisle, which I hate is still a thing. It looks like you could be walking into 1989. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, from all the different things they're, they're even re-releasing the toy biz styled action figures mm-hmm. for the Marvel characters. Or, or the Spider-Man action figures from Toy Biz. Mm-hmm. They're bigger, more articulated, uh, but they still have that original packaging look. It's it's really, really cool if you're a fan of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they. I, I think they're just locking in on the fact that we're nostalgic, we have money, we can pay 20 bucks a figure now. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what they all cost. Mm-hmm. Except for the... Uh, the Ghostbusters, they were fourteen ninety nine, so that was, that was cheap. The, um, you know, I, I, you know, who's to blame for all this? The government. <laughs> I got, <laughs> I, I got some documents here, folks, about the, about the government. So the, um, had they not ruined, uh, Saturday morning cartoons by saying there's no education in these advertisements that we were watching. We would still have those same types of cartoons yeah, going on today with have, new properties. We would have. <laughs> 30 years of crap properties with some gems in them. I mean, like, back in the day, we were getting, like, random stuff. Tiger Sharks, Silver Hawks, weird stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's some staying properties like G.I. Joe and Transformers that have, that have made an impact and, and stuck with us. But because they could just put out any kind of crap, mm-hmm. we got all those weird ones. And so now we're stuck with just those legacies because through the years they haven't had the chance, the opportunity to just put out, let's try this, let's try that, let's yeah. try this. So, yeah, it's much to our detriment. I would love for Disney uh, to be able to let somebody have access to, like, their IPs to license for cheap, maybe. I don't know. Because I was all about that Disney Infinity just so I could have figures of, like, Tron and, like, stuff like that, you know? Like, especially now that Disney owns the the Fox stuff, uh-huh. like, I would love to have, like, some really high quality. They have them. Go to what? Walgreens. If you go to Walgreens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know because I look for the G.I. Joe classified figures there. Mm-hmm. And I'm always sad because there's a hole where the G.I. Joe classified figures should be. Mm-hmm. But to the left of it are really high quality Tron figures. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to check that out then. Man, the, the, like now that they own Fox, that's my dream is the Star Wars Tron Aliens movie mm. crossover. And I think it's so simple to do. <laughs> like I already have the plan. Like oh, I'm so simple. <laughs> they like in Star Wars in Star Wars, they go to this planet that's being like uh it's overrun by aliens, and so they create a simulation to help like train people to do that. And who's in the simulation but Tron? Like it's oh I got it. It's right there, man. Hit me right up. There. Hit me up, Disney. Uh I wanna say uh thanks for the subscription, Bongo McFarland. Um so before we end out the show and in in, in Tying to some of the topics that we talked about tonight. Mm-hmm. I have a surprise for Brian. He actually didn't know I brought it. I did not. I snuck into the studio before he got in here. So, Merry Christmas. Oh, man. Sarah. See, I was going to buy you a present too. And then I no. was like, oh, he didn't say anything about it. I don't it. care. All right. All right. Well, here we go. Oh, wait. You got to look oh. at the sticker. Oh. See, you made the nice list. Oh, I made the nice <laughs> list. <laughs> All right. I don't see my name on it, though. So, how do I know it's really for me? All right. Ready? Yeah. Are you ready? Here we go. I do you rip open presents or do you carefully open them? No, I tear them open. Oh, really? I I I carefully open them. I try not to like create waste. And then you could reuse this paper for something. I may have. Okay, there you go. (gasps) Oh man, that's awesome. (laughs) 
And it, so the packaging on this what is, is really it? cool. All right, so it is a Krang and Baby Shredder uh, NECA figure. The packaging is so cool on this too because it looks like the old. It's not F Y F H E. Yeah. Uh, v VHS tapes. Does it say? Yeah. On look at the top. Oh yeah, seat. the NECA the NECA on it is the same font also as the F H E. That is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome, dude. So I. Uh, I hope you don't have that one. I do not. Okay. Well, I know you're a Turtles fanatic. You own the Turtles pinball machine. You got the 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 like two foot tall NECA figures back there. But of the like the new smaller ones that are cartoon oriented, I don't know that you had any of those. And I saw that today. Um, and does ten? I know he lives in our town. Go to Target, bro. They had like ten of those things. Oh wow! Today. Um, so I don't know if they still have any, but I, I, I came across that. It was the first I saw it. So I thought of my friend Brian, wanted to wish him a Merry Christmas. And it was appropriate for our show today because my final pick was Retro Toy Goodness. And boy, look at that. It delivers. Yes, I am super excited. So this has actually been a – somebody else gave me a toy for Christmas also, like one, one of my other friends, and it was like a special alien thing. So all of my dreams are coming true. Yay! <laughs> so, well, Preston – how can everyone else's dreams also come true? <laughs> oh boy, let me tell you. Uh, your dreams can come true by continuing to watch our show. We're, you know, we already had our Thanksgiving episode, but at the end of this year, we want to again say thank you for um, following along and watching our show, listening to us, mm -hmm. um, following us on social media, which you can do at Wayback Attack, Wayback underscore Attack on Twitter. Um, you can find me at Squared Stiff on Twitter. Brian, where can they find you? You can find me at B.E. Grantham. You can email the show at waybackattackshow at gmail.com. And please, please, please check out our Patreon. There's special. We have multiple shows available, right? The, the second one's up there, right? Yeah. Okay. We have multiple shows available. Um, you know, get access to Discord. If you cannot, I understand uh, the year is what it is, and you might not be in a spot where you can uh, subscribe to our Patreon. If you can't do that, do me a favor and just tell a friend, check out the show and just, you know, send them a link to the yeah. podcast or to the show. On, hey, on YouTube, we're bringing so. you two shows a month yeah, look of, us of fun, free goodness. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, we get to do this next year too. And um, yeah, dude, this has been fun. I hope you guys who are watching or listening have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And let's do this all again in 2021. Yes, I cannot wait. And uh, I hope that we can uh, see you then. And until then, wear a mask and be safe. <laughs>